Hey yo, and welcome to our final Command Block Deep Dive for Season 1 of Five Block Friday. This episode, I'm looking into the commands used in last Friday's Maze Generator. But before I jump into the commands, I'm going to do an overview of the algorithm used to generate the maze and why it works to generate a random maze. The algorithm I've used to generate this maze is called a depth first search algorithm. And how it works is you start at any point in the maze, and the maze starts out without having any paths through it. There's just a set of tiles, and each step you choose a random neighboring tile that you haven't visited yet, so it's not part of the maze already, and you cut down the wall between where you currently are and that tile, and then you move to that spot. You keep doing this over and over again, uh, moving to new nearby spots that haven't been visited yet. Once you're in a position where you can't move any farther, you need to backtrack until you're back in a spot where you have a valid tile that you can visit. You then repeat this process until eventually you've backtracked to the tile you started at. This is a very lightweight algorithm because all you need to keep track of is which tile your walker is currently on, which tiles you've already visited, what walls have been cut down, and probably most complicated, some method of backtracking when you walk into a corner. To keep track of tiles we've already visited, we're using the base plate that's built into armor stands and toggling it off when a tile has been visited. And to be able to backtrack, whenever we visit a tile for the first time, we rotate it to face the direction we came in from, and then whenever we need to backtrack, we just follow the direction that the tile we're on is currently facing. With all those pieces in place, it's just a matter of letting the maze generator run until the walker is back in the tile it started at, and at that point, the maze will have been completely generated. So with that, let's dive into the specific commands used to create this maze generator. This first command is used to reset the maze. So in our execute statement, we're looking for a snowball that has been renamed to reset in an anvil. We're going to the position of our maze walker, and we make sure that there isn't a maze tile within half a block. So this will guarantee that our maze is currently in a resting state, and that it's not in the middle of trying to generate a maze already. If we meet those conditions, so we have the specially named snowball in midair, and we're not in the middle of generating a maze already, we reset the maze. To do this, we change our executors to be all of the maze tiles, we execute at their position. We're using this store here to do two things at once, as always. Theoretically, what we're storing is the success value of whatever comes after the run statement, but the scale at the end is zero, so whatever happens, we're, whether we fail or succeed, the value we're storing is going to be zero and we're storing that in the no base plate nbt value, which guarantees that after this command is run, no base plate will be zero, so the armor stand will have a base plate, which is the default when an armor stand is placed in the world originally. In the run statement, we place all the walls by filling the area above each armor stand, so we fill from negative 1 in the x and z coordinates to positive 1 in the x and z coordinates. The y coordinates can vary depending on how tall you want the wall, but we start at positive 2 above the armor stand. Since the armor stand is two blocks tall, this will be the block directly above the armor stand. And in this case, we're just going to positive 3 above the armor stand, but you could go as high as you want. And then we're filling with gray concrete, so the walls of this maze will be made out of gray concrete. And this replace air is important because if we're only replacing air, we can change out the floor to be something different than the wall, and this command won't override the floor. 
You can add doors or windows to the walls, and they won't be replaced. So that's why having replace air is important in this command. But the the height that you're filling, the material you're filling with, all of that can be customized depending on what style of maze you're wanting. This second command rotates maze tiles that are near the walker to face the walker so that we can use them for backtracking later on. We start by executing at the position of the maze walker, and then as the maze tiles that are between one and a half and two and a half blocks away from the maze walker. This facing statement means we're executing as though we were facing the maze walker. So at this point in the command, we're executing as a handful of up to four maze tiles that are adjacent to the walker, as if we were facing the walker. And then in the run statement, we're teleporting ourselves. The first three tildes mean we're teleporting to our current location. This next tilde is part of the rotation in the teleportation command. And combined with the facing statement from earlier means when we teleport, we'll be rotated to be facing the maze walker. This zero at the end is also part of rotation, and this will guarantee that the tile is facing straight ahead and not tilted up or down at all. This third command is where we choose a random tile nearby to visit. We execute at the position of the maze walker, and then as a single random maze tile that's between one and a half and two and a half blocks away, and we specify that it has to be a maze tile with no base plate set to zero. We then store the success value of whatever comes after the run statement, which should be one, and we store that as the no base plate value of this random tile we've selected. So after the run statement, no base plate on this armor stand should be set to 1, which means that this tile has been visited. In the run statement, we have another teleport command, and we are teleporting the maze walker to the position of the executing entity, which is the random tile that we selected in the execute statement. This fourth command is where we carve new walls through the maze, we start by executing as the maze walker at the maze walker's current position. We change the execution rotation to match the maze tile that we're currently on. So if we've just gotten to this tile for the first time, we should be rotated to be facing the tile that the maze walker was just on previously. I'll get back to this store statement in a second, but we're taking the success value of whatever comes after the run statement and storing that as the no base plate value of the maze walker armor stand. In the run statement, we're filling an area with air. We're using local coordinates to fill an area based on both our current position and our current orientation. That's what the, the caret notation does. So all we're doing is we're, these first three values are selecting a spot three blocks directly above us based on the angle that we're at. And back a couple command blocks ago when we chose our orientation, we guaranteed that we're going to be facing directly even with the horizon. So this is equivalent to saying three blocks directly above us. The second corner of the area we're filling is five blocks above us and two blocks in front of us. So we're taking a chunk directly above us and in front of us for a few blocks and filling that area with air. Looking back at that store subcommand from earlier, a fill command returns success if any blocks were changed with the fill command, and it returns failure if no blocks were changed. So if we're carving a new wall, this will return success, and we'll set no base plate on the walker to 1. If there were no blocks filled, that is, this area had already been filled with air, then we'll set no base plate to 0. 
This will be relevant in the next command. This final command block takes care of backtracking when necessary. In the execute statement, we're executing as the maze walker, but only as the maze walker if no base plate is set to zero. So this means we are only doing this if we failed to fill any blocks in the previous command. Then we execute at the position of the maze walker and rotated as the nearest maze tile. Then we simply teleport two blocks directly in the direction we're facing, which from the second command should be the direction we came in from and will backtrack us one spot along the maze. Thank you for watching this deep dive episode. I hope you enjoyed seeing how three teleport and two fill commands can be used to generate a random maze. Like I said in last Friday's episode, this is the end of season one of Five Block Fridays. I definitely intend to do a season two at some point. I just need to take a break and I have some larger projects that I think you all will enjoy that I'm working on. If you want to stay up to date on what I'm doing between videos, join the Command Block Cove Discord. There's an invite down in the description. In the meantime, whatever you can do to help the algorithm find these videos is greatly appreciated, and I hope to see you probably not next Friday, but sometime in the future.